Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a video that I've been itching to make for such a long time because I love this game, the series, to pieces. Um, I was a part of the community in a, well, <laughs> a, a viewership-wise, I was a part of the community, <laughs> which was uh, Borderlands, basically, way, way back in the day, from Borderlands 1 to Borderlands 2. Um, I've always watched videos of that game, and basically, this video is just me absolutely hyped for Borderlands 3, which Gearbox uh, has been teasing, but also, of course, they're making it. <laughs> like, it's one of those things where it's like, no, they're doing it. <laughs> like, why would they not do... I don't know. Anyways, point being is that I'm a big time fan of the game series and uh, towards the the tail end of Gearbox's later developments, um, they made Battleborn, which I covered greatly and I love that game to pieces. And it just still to this day it makes me so sad that the, the way that that game was treated was the way that it was treated, <laughs> you know? Uh, very much I think that game was very ahead of its time. Uh, like if you, if you think back to like right now where Overwatch is kind of dipping down a little bit just because they're not offering something kind of new and all those things where like now if Battleborn existed and came came to and instead of it just being like this 4v4 kind of deathmatch but it was Battleborn's way of doing like a like team based stuff where you're basically protecting your spider and all these things I think that would be perfect for this time period right now but so many people didn't give it a chance because of, of Overwatch and all those things also because it was labeled a hero shooter and I think most people who like were true fans of it we're like, no, <laughs> it's a MOBA. It's a MOBA game, like a first-person badass MOBA. and <laughs> Really good. Anyways, I was never particularly skilled at the game, <laughs> but I covered the shit out of it because I loved it to pieces. But with all that being said, this video, at least I'm going to probably end up titling it something along the lines of my wish list for Borderlands 3. Honestly, a side thing, I feel like a lot of people don't realize like how many... People love Borderlands 2 specifically, um, and I'm honestly I'm a person that enjoyed the pre-sequel. I like I love I love the games to pieces. I think they're all I love their humor and all these things. I also love the way that they handle builds, especially the pre-sequel. I feel like the pre-sequel gets a lot of shit because it wasn't made by Gearbox necessarily. But I, that's the one thing that I hope dearly that Gearbox takes from the pre-sequel is that those characters, like like the doppelganger, Wilhelm, and all those people, they're like expertly balanced classes. Or like each person, and the builds you could make with those characters were so synergistic that was great. I really, really hope out of all the things, Gearbox takes notes of that uh, from the pre-sequel. Because it wasn't all, like, I, I, actually, I think it's a fine game. Like for people who were like, I never played the pre-sequel because, ugh. It's not that bad. Like, it's actually very, very good. I would still consider it a game worth playing, you know, especially if you like Borderlands 2. Um, but anyways, Borderlands 3. Okay, I shouldn't do this. <laughs> but uh, just in case you missed a lot of the Borderlands 3 news, I've been keeping up to date for a long while. Now, a long bit ago, um, way, way before anything, there was like a, a press conference, or not a press conference, like a, a, a meeting with 2K people, which is Gearbox's publishing company, I believe. Um, and they were saying that there's a big game coming basically and of course people were like it's Borderlands And they said that it was gonna be coming uh, in the latter half of 2019 to 2020 around there um, Which makes sense because they were like this is for this is 2k's biggest property or something like that Everyone was assuming Borderlands and even now uh, more recently um, Like a week ago Borderlands has been or not Borderlands Gearbox has been releasing like teases of like Something's gonna happen with the series that you love so much, like maybe a remaster, definitely, probably, <laughs> hopefully, um, some sort of chatter about Borderlands 3, some sort of gameplay, and so I'm doing this with the timeline. This is current day, and this is way, way, ag long, long ago, like a year ago, where they were talking about it coming out. Anyways, uh, and then, ooh, a little bit in the middle, um, uh, The No, uh, otherwise known nowadays as Inside Gaming. Love that channel so much. Anyways, <laughs> they covered a story way, way back in the day. Uh, not really way, way back. It's in the middle of last year, probably, or end tail end of last year. Anyways, they actually uh, got a leak of characters. Now, this is a leak, so it's speculation, but a lot of the characters that they had were, like, weirdly perfect for what, what, what should be in the next game, like Borderlands 3. Uh, so one of the things in Borderlands 2 that I think a lot of the community really, really wanted was a proper beast class. Um, like for me, for instance, what, if you were to ask, were gonna, were gonna ask me one of my like most desired playable character types, I would love if there was like a character that was like a, had a pet class and that pet class was a skag. Like I think that'd be awesome, especially in the Borderlands series where we see like a skag can grow like 
overtoweringly tall. Um, or a little baby skag with a razor blade in his face can just wreck. <laughs> like, has the, has the ferocity to, like, take down Goliaths. <laughs> and it's like, that's awesome. Anyways. Uh, so that's something that everyone's wanted for a long time as a beast class. And also another thing that people have really, really wanted from the Borderlands series is a proper melee character. And Krieg was kind of like that. And Athena in the pre-sequel was getting closer to what I think people would have wanted. Um, and then in uh, Borderlands 3, um, there is speculation that there is a siren melee kind of berserker character, which just sounds amazing. So yes. The leak that the No uh, talked about was that there is going to be a beast class, like a beast tamer, um, in the in the sense that he he has like multiple animals, kind of like what's his name, <laughs> uh, Mordecai has a Bloodwing, except it's like different variants, like Bloodwing, uh, a Skag, and I think something else. Anyways, uh, so yes, beast class, Siren that does melee, wicked, uh, doppelganger, ganger, like zero clone tech. I think is what that character should be assigned to. He's more of like a tech character. Uh, I think something that you see in the ta Tales from the Borderlands, like that kind of weird, like Hyperion tech craziness. Anyways, third thing, or fourth thing. <laughs> um, oh, classic soldier class that has like a little bot that can heal you. Like kind of like the classic soldier, of course, that's going to come to the game because that's always a nice standard point for everyone to kind of like anyone who's not familiar with Borderlands to jump in and be like okay this is just a generic soldier class point shoot pull the trigger of course I think that's probably not gonna be the case because even with Axton you could get crazy Axton was always kind of weak though <laughs> anyway so the beast class which is absolutely the class I'm playing I, I can't tell you how much I've wanted a beast class like I said with like a skag or something which is weird enough what they were saying was that he has a variant of that so he ha he's the first or one of the first class that actually has three alts uh, or three what is it called S supers i think it's alts i think it was just called alts <laughs> he has three alts um one of them being a skag one of them being a, a a bird kind of thing like bloodwing um and then another being something else um and i think each one of his skill trees is going to be tied to that animal um and i feel like he is going to be the character that is going going to be the first character in Borderlands, more or less. Some you could do this, but you could split your like points up evenly and see actually like a really cool build come together, rather than just being like, okay, you're just going to want to stick to point A and point B. Uh, don't mess with C. I'm talking about skill trees, <laughs> so don't go to C. Invest in A and B, and maybe throw one into into C just to get like that special modifier all the way up. If you played Borderlands, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway. Uh, so Beastmaster is sick. The soldier class seems like she needs more explanation, but she seems really cool too. Because she seems like she's a, a mixture of like a soldier class, but a drone. Which was the best part of Wilhelm. Like Wilhelm, to me, was a just really clever character in terms of like build. Like again, if you only played a little bit of the pre-sequel, do yourself a favor and go download the pre-sequel and download a save game of like any of the characters plus 50 um, with their own like assigned build quickly glance at the build and just play through the campaign again and holy shit dude does everything like just meld into each other so perfectly especially wilhelm i just play a lot of that character but yeah really well really well done uh builds in the pre-sequel but uh as of the doppelganger guy uh the, he's not the doppelganger he's basically a tech oriented person so they kept comparing him to zero but i don't think that's fair i think the tech character the thing that would make the most sense to me is he's a character that doesn't really depend too much on his ultimate instead he's given a, a bunch of tiny abilities so that to me would make more sense uh, because the way that they made him sound is he has a, a clone or like a decoy is what they made it sound like um but to me that would only make sense with the further explanation that they give where they mention that he's kind of tech oriented which would make sense when you see things like um jack uh handsome jack the doppelganger in the pre-sequel a lot of his abilities were like okay this completely overwrites your melee so now you do a complete beam attack that does a shit ton of damage if you're able to get it on a critical spot um and things like that where like i think your grenade would be different i think when you shoot you'd have a chance of like adding electricity to your bullets like something like that where yes he has just kind of a generic um action skill that's what it's called um but uh, every other thing is being affected whereas i feel like the beast master and i really hope this is not exactly the case is going to be very dependent on his animals like you you're, you're like like Mordecai, where Mordecai is like more or less a bitch, uh, unless you build him for guns or like p pistols. But Mordecai is more or less a bitch uh, until you use Bloodwing. I uh, would just throw it out and it eviscerates everything, which was cool. But it'd be nice to have some sort of middle ground to where like you're not just strong in a burst; <laughs> you're strong consistently. But what can you do? Um, and yeah. Oh, also the melee siren. I don't know what to go off of besides. I hope it's it's 
It took the best parts about Krieg and and destroyed Silence the Voices, <laughs> please. Because uh, Krieg was, would have been such a fun character if you didn't, if the character <laughs> wasn't held back by like the complete wild card nature. And I realized that's what makes Krieg so lovable. But it was impossible to play Krieg. And I love playing Krieg. But goddamn, it was like, yeah, you just crack yourself three times in the face. And then you're like, well, that was fun. Reset. <laughs> and it's like, what the hell? And you couldn't do melee unless you had that perk. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I really love the series to pieces. That's why I'm so impassioned by it. But uh, enough of that. Uh, this is just a kind of a recap for anyone who's not incredibly excited for the pre-sequel. Or not the pre-sequel. <laughs> Borderlands 3. Um, because again, I'm hyped for a beast class. Like a beast tamer class. Except it's not a beast tamer. He just summons forth you know, beasts to wreck the world. Uh, but it's also weird because he seems to be a robot. Like his, his concept art, if it is to be believed, if this leak is even true, which it may not, you know, temper your expectations. But if this Beastmaster is the Beastmaster, he's like a robot. Or at least he very much looks like a robot that's just kind of like, I love animals. <laughs> I love animals so much. He's petting something is what I'm doing with my hand. Coffee. <laughs> Need more coffee. Okay, now that everyone's up to speed, even though everyone was probably already up to speed, because everyone loves Borderlands. <laughs> okay, everyone's a super fan. It's a great game. Wishlist for Borderlands 3. Again, the only thing that I can I can consider for like light, hopefully, things that they do do in, in Borderlands 3, if they learn from Borderlands 2 and their pre-sequel, um, and for that more Battleborn. Like, again, we'll get into that, but... Anyway, like what they learned from Battleborn. But, um, again, I really, really hope from the, that Gearbox learns from the balance that was... Not even the balance. That's a wrong word to say. The synergy that existed within the pre-sequel. Like, I really love that game. And even Battleborn. Battleborn had really good synergy, especially with characters like... Um, oh, what's her name? The Tiny Tina? I'm so shit. In Battleborn, there was this crazy Tiny Tina weird skeleton girl <laughs> that uh, had great synergy like uh, and then they nerfed her because she had too good of synergy and then they buffed her and it was a whole thing but um i really really hope they and i do from like if you look at battleborn a lot of the characters to me were very synergistic like a lot of things played into its into each other and what they were going for um so for me i really hope that is the case and furthering that i really hope that every character can be and that's something that the pre-sequel hit really well is that every character can be ungodly strong if you did get all of your ducks in a row. Uh, meaning, if you had the right legendary shield that fit perfectly into your, your build, if you had the right weapons that fed perfectly into your build, you'd be able to maximize everything and just blitz everything down to nothing. And to me, that is such a good feeling um, when you do work towards getting all of those things. Um, whereas I felt like sometimes in Borderlands 2, um, you get everything that you need to be like to maximize every bit of damage that you could get and it still wasn't enough because I don't know, a badass something smacked you three times and you're like, okay, well, what can I do there? <laughs> like, I don't have any, there's not like I can hit his knee and stagger him and then he takes a knee for t 10 seconds and I just have to light him up in the face. So I really, really hope that they empower you at end game, not again give you another like three extra badass tiers like, like uh, vault hunter death mode badass mode here's you feeling like you do nothing again kind of mode uh because i would love for you to constantly keep your teeth you know like which again the pre-sequel did a great job of that end game again builds were so synergistic that as long as you did the right things in the right order <laughs> like got a kill and the kill skill got activated you could wreck the world so I really hope that it comes over from Borderlands 3 is that better optimized and synergistic builds uh, or just skill trees really like they play into each other and that, and that kind of stuff but my big big like desire for Borderlands 3 my the number one wish list thing I have um, is I hope so dearly that they bring back explosives in a better way uh, so yeah I love Torque to pieces like I love the whole weird brand that they did with that but I hate what they did with the explosives they made them like like their faction allegiance thing they made it so that the bullet speed of an explosive gun was super slow the fire rate was jarring to where like if you had a shotgun it'd be like boom 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 and and then you'd see your bullets miss because you can't counter correct at all um and and they just never did well it's weird because they did good damage but it, it just didn't feel good i guess that's the way i'd like to put it it's like in borderlands one explosive weapons were great and especially with brick um, who facilitated them they were even better i um, mean to me if they don't make guns like a, i don't know legendary that kind of nullifies the effects of explosives and their negatives 
I hope dearly that they make a playable character later down the line that is like a siren in the sense that he is all about one specific element like Lilith is for fire and Maya is for slag or whatever. Uh, I would love it if there was like some sort of bastardized child um, of the elemental world that got like experimented on and now has like com uh, control over like the atoms in his body that explode, right? Or something, they repair itself and explode again, like some crazy, like a Krieg kind of like person that's dealing with this trauma but also has the power of uh, ba like taking away the negative of explosives. I would love that to pieces. Like a character that's skill tree has like one entire skill assigned to like, okay, explosive bullets do more damage and they travel faster. Um, so it's basically if you get that entire skill, it nullifies the entire negative to explosive damage. Um, and then like something else where, I don't know, when you get kills with explosive weapons, sizzle happens, which increases your re regen and it stacks up to five times or something, right? Um, and, and degrades every three seconds or something, right? Like something like that, like a skill that empowers you to use that element because that was something that never, like, that existed for every other element except for explosive. Like there was no character that was like, yeah, we're going to bump up explosive damage. Or at least not by much. Not, not by, like, a level in which, again, you could be powerful. Which, again, hoping in Borderlands 3, that doesn't, that's not the case. Where, like, things are able to be stupid and you're able to just, like, eviscerate someone if you have everything that you need in terms of like the right skills the right mod the right grenade the right shield the right everything right i really hope that happens <laughs> um also something that borderlands or uh, gearbox or some one of the people <laughs> over there uh tweeted about a long time ago is uh is melee weapons so uh i feel like that's something that's equally as awesome and i guarantee that they're going to use that in the uh like ads so beforehand they were like borderlands two million guns get them all or <laughs> whatever but now they're like two million guns and one million melee weapons and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> i could totally see that being a thing which is awesome by the way um but yeah really 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 hope explosives make a comeback in borderlands in a good way like wouldn't that be awesome if there was like I don't know, like a new character came out like a couple months after launch or whatever um, and it was like Son of Torque or something like that and it's this kid who's like, I don't know, got like accidentally fell in like a vat of experimental bullshit <laughs> that gave him like explosive powers. That'd be so wicked. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Anyways, moving on, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and lastly, um, this, a lot of the like my wish list for Borderlands is because uh, I trust Gearbox immensely with that series and like just the humor and the weirdness and just it like again I love almost everything about that series so again my only thing I didn't like was again the fact that a lot of the uh, especially in Borderlands 2 the combat felt like tapered back almost like again it was not it wasn't synergistic that that often and it wasn't powerful like when you got to end game skills didn't feed into each other enough to like facilitate you wrecking the share of the world you know whereas in the pre-sequel it did and i really hope they again take that with it and in battleborn it does too so again i think they did but speaking of battleborn that is my only other like major desire for borderlands uh uh three is and this is something that we may not get uh or maybe maybe those leaks for characters which seem really plausible were absolutely incorrect and there was just some dude lying maybe but um in case those were the four characters that we are going to be getting in borderlands 3 um i'm hoping that there's an explosive character or just uh, out of the characters that do exist one of them uh has like two or three skills of buff explosives would be cool because again in borderlands besides brick there was no other person that really buffed up explosive weapons, but they buffed up every ele every other elemental person type, whatever, <laughs> between Gage and Maya and, and Lilith and all these things. Anyways, so I really want an explosive boy <laughs> or a woman, whatever. Um, and I really, 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 really hope that one character from Battleborn, at least synerg not synergistically, we just gotta stop saying that word. <laughs> um, at least one character from Battleborn, which I love to pieces. Um, doesn't come into Borderlands 3, but a character like that comes into Borderlands 3. And of course, I am referring to Shane and Oryx. Uh, my favorite design-wise, character what well, no, the character was kind of all over the place. It was very, those other characters were way stronger, but anyways. <laughs> um, for me, and you guys might be like, oh, Shane and Oryx is basically like, uh, the Mechromancer, right? Like, it's just this tiny punk badass chick with this giant fucking, like, demon mechanized monster above her protecting her. And I would say, 
incorrect. <laughs> uh, but also, yes, you're probably right. But to me, and it doesn't have to be like uh, this, this thing, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be, how do I explain it? So one of the coolest parts about Chain and Oryx to me uh, is, of course, the fact that there was like this punk rocker chick who, in a weird way, made a deal slash screwed over a demon uh like creature that hovers over her and and protects her now that's wicked in itself um and i don't i wouldn't need that to be the thing that like for the new character that i hope they eventually would add that would be similar to shannon oryx i wouldn't need that from it but it would be cool for us <laughs> anyways um the thing that i would really like from it is to keep the notion of normal human person with with an extension of their themselves um, in the sense of like a towering person over them. Uh, so instead of it being like a Mechromancer thing where it's basically just like a glorified machine summon class, it's cool, but it's not quite what I liked about Shane and Oryx. I mean, that's cool with the Mechromancer, but not with Shane and Oryx. What made Shane and Oryx really cool to me is that, and this is why I think it would, out of all the characters in, uh, Battleborn, this character would fit mechanically in the Borderlands world is because what Oryx was, um, was a shield. Uh, for Shane. So to me, that would be so, so cool. Uh, for, for like, there to be this thing, this like towering whatever, I don't know, maybe you make a deal with this Iridian slug, <laughs> I don't know, that hovers over you and like towers over you like this dark shadow with these fucking grimace claws. I don't know, <laughs> whatever it is. Or like a werewolf over, I don't know what happens. <laughs> or like a mechanized whatever. But, even still, is like this extension of yourself, which is really cool because in Borderlands you have shields, a bunch of different shields. Shields where like if you get attacked, it will shoot a, a spike of elemental effect at that person. So for you to put on a shield and then for that to empower your already existing bodyguard shield, which is like this ribcage or whatever behind you that's taking that damage, um, and then for all of your skills to kind of be worked around that would be amazing. Like again, um, I don't know, maybe one skill tree focuses on your, like, militaristic side. Uh, so instead of, you know, you're, like, basically guns. Uh, so you'll be shooting, you'll be shooting, and maybe when you take a certain amount of damage, or you absorb enough am amount of bullets, or if your creature that's hovering over you protecting you absorbs enough bullets, he'll whip out a gun and start firing those bullets back at them. Um, like, that would be really cool. Like, synergistic things like that, to me, really, really would facilitate the Borderlands economy in terms of, like, shields, grenades, all these things. Also, the dynamic, like, that was, that was one of the things. Like, a lot of, a lot of the characters in Bo Battleborn were very clever. Like, very clever. But, I feel like the, the, the one that I, I, again, I already said, Shane, in my opinion, was not a very powerful class. But I still played the shit out of them. Uh, because they were just fun together like again the back and forth is really really good with Shane and Oryx where essentially it's this punk rocker chick um, who what do you call it who's super upbeat and kind of happy and crazy <laughs> honestly um, and then there's just this deadpan hates existence hates life emo as fuck demon <laughs> who just who constantly is sick and tired of his like over peppy chick shit um and that dynamic between the two is just so great and to me i really really hope that it comes in some form regardless if it's like i don't know maybe they bring back the necromancer um but instead of it being just this like thing that flies around and kills shit and like is kind of derpy instead they just anchor it to to uh gauge <laughs> that's her name gauge um, and she, I don't know, maybe she activates her alt and maybe one of the skill trees makes her melee base. Maybe one of the skill tree again makes her gun base. So when you activate the alt, your character whips out guns and starts going to town. Maybe you want to invest in two sides and he whips out guns and he has blades and he'll fuck up shit in close range proximity. Who knows? But to me, I love that so much. That's such a cool thing that fits so well into the Borderlands world is a Shane and Oryx kind of idea. Not them specifically, like I don't need them to come over, but an idea of like... A little baby person that doesn't have the necessary means to defend themselves makes a deal with with thing that is relentless powerful and just a monster to gain power uh, so that they can survive in this world and be a vault hunter you know uh, and that to me would be so sick um, and in and there's kind of cases like that where like yeah, but again I, I wouldn't want it if it was a, another kind of beast class, you know? Because we already kind of have it, or at least, at least we have it in other Borderlands. But we don't have that kind of, like, weird back and forth with these two 
very different creatures, but they both love each other very much, it also seems. So that was another funny thing in Battleborn, where, like, Shane Oryx, Oryx specifically, just fucking hating on Shane constantly, just bitching and moaning, but at the end of the day, at least the vibe I got was that they loved each other. Like, they were still, like, Oryx was like, I hate you, but, like, don't mess with my girl, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> that kind of like, hey, I'll fucking annihilate you. Little Miss is on my team, fuck off. <laughs> and it was, like, a real badass, like, big brother moment. Love that shit. But anyway... I really, really hope that also would come. So my wish list is explosives make a comeback. Uh, comeback. Hopefully, it's a it's from a character down the line that they create, or maybe it's one of the existing characters that we already kind of maybe know about because of a leak. Um, maybe one of them have like an explosive perk in their uh, skill tree, which again makes explosive weapons powerful, right? Because every like you know character throughout the all the characters we've had facilitate. Some things, and I don't think there's many who who like really amp up guns. The Explosive. only one that comes to mind is Brick in Borderlands One, which that what I mean. Anyways, um, I also really, 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 really want uh, there to be balance, uh, and, or not balance, synergy, synergy within skill trees. That's another thing that I really, really love. And again, through seeing a pre sequel, which came after that, uh, Battleborn, there was tons of synergy in that game. But uh, again, the other thing that I would really, 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 really want to see from Borderlands is. Uh, a character archetype of Shane and Oryx kind of back to where again it, I don't know because like I'm not sure what it would be if it was an alt or if it was because then again I kind of like the idea of them taking a step back from like alts being this big thing that's like super important whereas why can't an alt just be a nice additive but the, the passive that you gain is again having this monster that hovers over you that gets affected by certain shields um, and it gets affected by certain damage that you take and all those kinds of things rather than it being like hey Here's a get out of jail get out of jail quick card, you know, which most skill things are um, or like here's me being really strong for like two seconds Where it'd be nice to have a character that's kind of Different, you know, like the passive is what makes them not not necessarily their like action skill um, But yeah, <laughs> that would be something that's really really cool to me at least but yes, ladies and gentlemen, honestly, thank you for hearing me just jabber on about uh, a series that I cannot wait to play. Uh, I hope it comes out. Oh, it'd be really cool if it came out this year, but I also think Cyberpunk's coming out this year, so please be before that. But if they did do that badass, like, mic drop moment where it was like, hey, motherfucker, it's coming out this year before before it got a, real, a, lot, a lot after, uh... Cyberpunk, <laughs> then I'd be hyped. <laughs> Regardless, guys, let me know what you guys really, really wish for in terms of Borderlands 3. What is your wish list for this game and this series? Um, again, I don't really have, like, again, I'm not, I'm not like, story-wise, I've always kind of trust Gearbox to kind of just tell a goofy, fun, enjoyable story. Um, as of mechanically, again, the mechanics stuff is what I don't really want to get into because I feel like it's just going to rack your brain. Like, is Borderlands going to be... Uh, like Destiny, and I don't think it is, maybe, but I don't really get that vibe, I feel like Borderlands or Gearbox is gonna do what they know right, and then maybe add some stuff later down the line that's different, that would make more sense to me, uh, but yeah, I don't know, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see, regardless, again, I've liked every Borderlands, so I don't like, <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not, I'm not difficult, <laughs> you know, I just really hope things that I've always wished the series would, would eventually dip their toe into, like again, Explosive character and or a Shane Norris character and or better synergy with uh, builds is always something that I've wanted uh, To see bet more in the series and despite this two characters. I would love to see them actually in the game <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for your time subscribe button above me to it is somewhere right and goodbye <laughs>